What's up? It's Jen Brown. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my collection of antique and vintage books. A little while ago I did just kind of like a general bookshelf tour. And for those of you that enjoyed that like overall view of my book collection, I thought it might be fun to share like a closer look at some of the antique and vintage books that I have. Some of them are really special to me, but just like really, I'm guessing, rare and old and pretty cool. And it's really exciting for me and I haven't taken them down and taken a look at them for a while, so I thought that might be fun to share. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got Alice in Wonderland from like the 60s, I think. Some of the cooler ones I will pull out and actually show them to you, but some of these I think are not so exciting. I'm trying to remember where they all are. Some of these textbooks are pretty old. We've got this kind of cool zoology one. This practical handyman's dictionary is pretty old. That one just makes me laugh. What have we got up here? Some school books. Um, we've got this pretty old version of Gone with the Wind. This one I will pull out. Can I do that without making my textbooks fall? Sort of. All the Harry Potters. Um, there's some that I'm missing. Where are... Oh, some of these were kind of hiding. This one sort of looks old, but I just took the dust jacket off it. But this is A Tale of Two Cities. That one is pretty old. Did I move my homework books? Yeah, because they're not down there. Okay. I've got more... These are sort of the, like, super cool ones that we're going to look at in a second. This actually is one um, that I inherited about a year ago. I've got a few of these, and I thought this was so cool. It's the Illustrated Treasury of Children's Literature, but hidden, like, inside here is this note that says Jason Chris from Aunt Nora and Uncle Eli but it says Christmas 1969 which I thought was pretty awesome and so I just kind of like tucked that back in there where I found it because I think that is really cool trying to get it back in there But it is just this collection of illustrated children's stories. That one's kind of scary looking. <laughs> it's in really good shape. Some of these I do actually read them when I get them, but sometimes like this I just think they're really cool and one day I might like sell them to people or give them away. Can I do this with one hand? Um, but especially like in this case where we were just kind of like cleaning out some stuff, I definitely won't be able to do this one handed. Okay, give me a second here. I just wanted to make sure that this kind of stuff would go to a place where it's well loved and that's kind of how I feel when I find like, I don't really look for books like this at the thrift store terribly often, but when I do or if I find them at antique stores and stuff, like I just want to give them a good home. Okay, for the fancy books, I actually, I need to see if I can find, I have a set of gloves I wear when I handle them because I don't want to be 
touching them with bare hands. And I'm gonna move this so that you're not just staring at the floor. Here, have a nice... That is not, you're on the couch, so... <laughs> have a nice crooked, far away shot of the books for a second. I will find it, I'm on a mission. Okay, so I have somewhere, I have a cloth glove that I've had for years that I use when I'm handling the books. And now, of course, I can't find it. So <laughs> I've got just regular old rubbery ones, but those will be fine. Okay, so we'll do a quick overview. Um, don't worry, we will definitely be pulling this one out. We've got, I've got, some of these are kind of like repeats of things, but, and my plan is, I got this a long time ago from my parents. They actually found it at an antique store. It is the Complete Works of Shakespeare from 1854. Uh, this thing is probably one of my most prized possessions. And really, really soon after they got it, I found a place that you could get custom sized acrylic cases for it. And I wanna do that for the rest of these. Obviously those get really expensive. And so what I wanna do kind of as soon as I can is just get like one big one that would go over all of these just because it's bad for them to be exposed to the air. But I'm still kind of working on that. So we've got this volume of some of Dickens' works. We've got a volume of Edgar Allan Poe, more Dickens, Robinson Crusoe, War and Peace, um, volume two, Um, this one, I think it's just, like, Maps of Spain. This one, I'm not even really sure what that is. Um, I think some of these are some of the ones I just got, um, that I just inherited. This one of Byron's poems I bought off Etsy a long time ago. Um, this one, it's just like Young Folks History of England, I think. I've had that one for quite a while. This one is um, The Iliad and the Odyssey, and my boyfriend actually got this for me from a garage sale for like 25 cents, uh, right when we were first dating, and it's still like one of the best presents I've ever got. Like, it doesn't matter how much it costs, but like the fact that he totally got me and knew that like a really old classic book was like the perfect present for me. I was just like, this is why I love you. <laughs> um, this one I think has like children's stories in it. I've had this one for a long time or poems or something, but I just thought the detailing on the spine was really pretty. This is Les Miserables from Victor Hugo. More Dickens works. I really thought that the spine of this was beautiful. Unfortunately, it's peeling off I used to keep a rubber band wrapped around it just to kind of keep it sitting up on there. I really honestly need to try to repair that. I know a very teeny little bit about book repair from when I used to work at a library, but I'm kind of afraid to do anything like that on books that are this old. Like, I don't, something feels weird about like gluing this on here. Like, it just kind of feels wrong. Um, this one I think is Tennyson. Tennyson's poems, and then these are more just, like, stories. So, oh, and then we have a few up here. This is, like, a little tiny version of A Comedy of Errors, and I got this at an antique bookstore, and I wanted to go back and get some more of them, because they had a bunch, but when I finally made it back there, the whole store was gone. Um... These are, oh, this is also the Iliad and the Odyssey, but, like, separate and different translations. This is uh, one of Sophocles' works. This one is really fantastic. Um, I really love Alexander Dumas. This is The Man in the Iron Mask. That's one of my favorite stories, along with The Count of Monte Cristo. So there's kind of an overview, and I will pull a few of these down, and we'll take a closer look at them. Here's the works of Poe. Obviously just a section of it. I think I was when I was looking up some of these to see like how old they were 
you can buy like full collections of these. They've got really cool illustrations in them. Obviously the pages are very yellowed, but they're in really good condition. The binding's in good condition. Obviously I'm not an expert on, in, you know, books of this type, but I try to just not handle them super often, but handle them with care when I do. This is that Dickens works that has that piece is falling out, but it has like the ribbing. And this really cool kind of like crest happening here. And this like marbling effect that I've seen. I don't remember, some of these like just don't have the year and some of them I don't remember. I want to say this one was pretty old too, but. Yeah, this one says 1892. And it has like the illustrations with like the tissue paper. This one feels a little bit more delicate, so I don't want to like turn the pages quite as much. These little guys have illustrations in them. That one's obviously too small. Oh, I love when they have like names and messages and stuff in them. Yeah, this one's got a picture of a bust of Homer. These say 1930s, 1935. So that's the Iliad and the Odyssey. This one's got some cool, like, embossing on the cover. That one we will leave. This one, I was really proud of myself. I did a ton of research on how to clean books, because this one actually had quite a bit of mildew all over it. And I think I pretty much got it all, but... I had to do quite a bit of cleanup. There's a piece of tape on here, but I kind of didn't want to take that off because I was scared that it would like pull up the leather. Oh, this one has illustrations too. I think I could not find a year on this one. I even like looked up the publisher and stuff. Ugh, this is so hard in these gloves and my hands are getting really hot. This was $5. I'm not sure, this is one of the ones I got for my uncle. I'm not sure where he got all of these, but um, we're from St. Louis and he lived there and there was every year this like big book sale that went on in like a parking garage of a mall or something um that was like this huge citywide thing that a bunch of like bookstores and libraries would like sell their old books for pretty cheap my mom took us a few times when we were kids and he i know my uncle like he liked old books and stuff too so he would go to that sale all the time and so he found a bunch of really cool things. This is like $5 is such a good deal for this, which I'm not sure if that's what he paid or if just somebody at some point paid that for this, but that's still like really crazy. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is that one with just like maps. It's like a, I think, like a travel book for Spain, which I just thought was really neat. It's pretty damaged, so I don't want to open it too much. 1930, it says. I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, a guidebook, it says. Let's see, this, this one. This 
This is some sort of religious book. It just says Catholic Presentation Library. I just got it because I thought the embossing on the cover was really cool. So this one I think I got off Etsy for a really good deal. It's really like beautiful cover and it's um, illustrated a bunch of Byron's poems I believe. It's pretty beat up. It has like the fancy like gold edges on the pages. Let me see if I can find a year in this one. Kinda just goes straight to contents with no like title page or anything. There's an advertisement in the front. Instead of an excuse, the publishers have to offer congratulation to the public upon being enabled by the lapse of copyrights to add most of the poetical works of Byron to their cheap but elegant series of our most esteemed poets. This volume contains all Lord Byron's poems, of which the copyright is free, with the exception of Don Juan, from which extraordinary work, as it is their wish, their books should be welcomed in every family circle. They have only presented carefully selected beautiful passages in which English readers are so well acquainted that they would naturally look for them. <laughs> I've never actually read that, so there's no copyright because... They didn't want there to be. That's really weird. It says it's illustrated. Let's see if we can find some. I've had this one for ages. It's been a really long time since I looked at it. Is there a date on this? No. I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter to me when it's from. Like, it's really cool if you find an old one, but if it's a cool looking book, I don't really... I love books of all types and all ages, but I just think it's kind of neat to know if you can find out. This is one of the earliest books that I bought for myself that was old from when I was in... I think I got it when I was in, like, high school. I'm your cousin Willie. Thanks, Willie. If I remember off the top of my head, I want to say like 1920s on this one, but is that a little. Oh, <laughs> way off. Uh, 1879. This is older than I remembered. I was going to say, as soon as I started saying 1920s, I was like, eh, these illustrations are too old for that. Um, this is the stories of Homer that I got from my guy. It has these cool illustrations in it. This one it's in pretty rough shape. It feels a little newer. Like just from the style, it doesn't have a year in it, but. but yeah, the illustrations in this one are kind of unique and cool. And then finally, from this stack is this one that has that really cool spine. What does that say? Song of the F. Songs of the F. I remember thinking that this is like really interesting. Let's see if we can read it in here. Affections. Okay, I was trying to say affirmations, and I was like, I don't think that's right. 
I think I bought this at an antique store like right after my parents found that Shakespeare book. I honestly, like, I don't even ever think I've asked them how much it was, just because I'm kind of curious, because this actually is the fancy gold pages too. Um, especially when you find stuff like this at antique stores, like, they know what they have, so they might mark things up. I think I paid like 30 or 40 bucks for this. But after they, my parents found that, I was like, let's go antiquing and find old books always, but like, that's such a rare find at an antique store. It was kind of like the most lucky thing ever. Ooh, 1867. I think this is just like, yeah, it's like sappy love poems, but again, it's got the cool illustrations, the fancy pages, just this sort of like unique embossing of the title on the cover. Alright, time to get the big one down. Every time I move, I always like pack this one in its own box surrounded with like oodles and oodles of bubble wrap and like I never put it in a moving truck, it always moves with me. Let's see. It has not been out of its box in years, honestly. It's it's pretty banged up. The spine's kind of coming off, but it's got this really cool design on it. Embossed cover. Pages are pretty water damaged, but oh, this only says 30. If they if my parents bought it for 30 bucks, that is like amazing. This is dated 1879. Did somebody... That, I guess, is like they dated it 1854. I think the actual copyright says that too. That's just like sad. Like, why would you write that in there? Like, it's bad to put stickers on them too, but... Like, come on now. Oh, that's crazy. The ink is like transferred over here. Yep, 1854. I have the um, Barnes and Noble like classics, like fancy looking version of this because I do actually really like Shakespeare um, and I do intend to one of these days be able to say that I've read all of his plays. I certainly won't be reading them out of this because the pages are more damaged than I remember, but like the spine is still in really good shape. But I just like, I don't know, I, I cannot believe that I own something this old that's like, what, 160 something years old? And just like having a piece of history that It's like, it's so crazy and cool to me. Whenever people play that game with you of like, if your house is on fire and you could save like one material possession, uh, it would probably be th this. <laughs> like, maybe some sort of like memento from a family member or something. Like, there's maybe a couple of things, but this is definitely very high on the list. Is that facing the right way? Yeah, I guess so. You can see the reflection of you in there. So that's my collection of antique and vintage books. I actually haven't gotten any new ones in a while, but it's something I always kind of enjoy looking at at antique stores and stuff. If you have any suggestions of where maybe you find books like that, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for new places to find that sort of a thing. I really hope you like this video. If you did and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I post videos on the 1st and the 16th of every month, although this summer I am trying to 
do a few more like bonus videos, so make sure to keep a lookout for those. Thanks so much for watching this one, and I'll see you next time.